this is Matt Tuchel Show with Intro Stats. Today we are looking at Z scores. Z scores. Uh, they're very famous, especially for normal quantitative data. Uh, we also use them in a lot of situations, critical values in confidence intervals. We also use them as test statistics, uh, mainly for proportions. So there's a lot of uses of Z scores in statistics. And uh, so I wanted to kind of introduce what is a Z score and sort of how does it work. So the first thing to remember is z-scores really go with normal data. The data does have to be normal for the z-score to be accurate. If you remember last time when we talked about normal quantitative data, we said that the most accurate average or center is the mean, and the most accurate spread is the standard deviation. And those two statistics were only accurate if the data was normal or bell-shaped. The, the z-score calculation is based on the mean and standard deviation being accurate. So you want to make sure that uh, your data is normal before you start uh, looking at z-scores. Alright, so just a couple things. Um, we saw last time that the, the, a mean of a data set is often denoted as an x with a bar over it. That Usually that symbol just means the mean of a sample data set. Also, we saw that the standard deviation is S, uh, or the sample standard deviation. Occasionally, though, you will see, and we'll kind of get more into this in the next, next unit, but there are other letters that you'll see in stats. Um, this letter right here that looks like a U with a tail is the Greek letter mu, and it's often denoted as a population mean. So if you knew the population mean average, uh, this symbol here is another Greek letter called sigma. Again, we'll get more into these letters in the next unit, so don't worry too much about it right now. But this, this, this letter right here, this Greek letter sigma, is usually denoted as a population standard deviation. So if you're talking about standard deviation of the entire population, then that would be sigma. So you'll see these letters sometimes in z-score formulas in stat books. All right, so what's a z-score? So a z-score basically counts the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. Okay, so it's really used as a sort of a comparison number. If you want to see how you did compared to everybody else, a z-score is one way to go. So um, you take, uh, basically it's calculated uh, by taking the data value, like your, you know, if you, if you ran a marathon, right, you wanted to see how did I do compared to everybody else. Well, you could take your time in the marathon minus the mean average of the, all the times in the marathon, divided by the standard deviation of all the times in the marathon, and you'd get a z-score. And that z-score would uh, be able to tell you how you did compared to everybody else. That's kind of what we use this for. Now, um, the data value is sometimes denoted as an x. I think if you remember when we were calculating mean and standard deviation, I was using the letter x. Um, x uh, minus the mean, so the x is like your marathon time, right? The data value you're, that you're that you're looking at, and then um, the mean is x bar, and s is standard deviation. Uh, also, sometimes you'll see the formula in stat books as x minus mu. Remember, that's the population mean divided by sigma, the population standard deviation. To me, though, especially for intro students, I would go with the word the word formula, right? That one you never get messed up because you don't you remember that you're not quite even remembering all the letters yet. But just think of it as the data value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay? Now if this z-score actually comes out positive, the data value must have been above the mean. And if the if the z-score comes out negative, then the data value must be below the mean. So kind of keep in mind that in, when you're kind of explaining the z-score, the uh, positive z-score you're going to say above in the sentence, and negative z-scores you're going to say below in the sentence. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. So let's look at a quick, couple quick examples. So let's suppose we're going to look at uh, IQ tests are normally distributed or normal with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, right? So a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So, um, 
So let's suppose that uh, we look at Maria's IQ, and Maria's IQ came out to be 147. How is that? How does that compare to everybody else that takes an IQ test? Well, we could calculate the z-score for Maria. So all you do is you put in Maria's score, 147, minus the mean, so minus 100, and then divide by 15, right? Divide by 15. So if we did that, 147 minus 100 is, is 47, and 47 divided by 15, you'd get positive 3.1333333. And that's the z-score. Uh, if you notice, you didn't really have to put this little positive sign. I do that. Anytime, um, a lot of times in certain statistics, uh, the positive and negative is really, really important in terms of interpretation. So a lot of times I will make sure to put a little symbol uh, next to it, just reminding myself that it's a positive value or it's a negative value. That's really important with z-scores. Now, um, if you'll notice, I did round it. Um, I, I round it to the uh, hundredths place, the second number to the right of the decimal. Not for really any good reason. Um, in the old days, before computers, we used to have these charts that you would look up things in that were organized by z-score and you would look up the z-score on these charts and the charts were always rounded to the hundredths place so uh, if you're like me and you've been around for a while and you've been kind of doing stats for a while you may be looking up stuff you may have looked up stuff on those charts and those charts were always rounded to the hundredths place so I think a lot of us old timers that were been doing this before computers we uh, not that I actually was um, doing charts before computers because computers have been invented, but um, I have used the charts in the past, and then again, I, those charts were rounded to the hundredths place, so that's why I rounded it to the hundredths place. Now, the more important part of this is, what does this mean, right? What does this mean? First of all, notice the z-score was positive. That means Maria's IQ was above the mean, right? He, she was above the average. So, if we look at that, okay, well, Positive means it's above, right? And But remember, a z-score is not a percentage. A z-score is not kilograms, it's not dollars, it's not miles. Uh, a z-score is number of standard deviations. That's why we often call it a standardizing score. It's a way of comparing things when you may not understand. Like, you might not understand the physics involved in, a, in some data that maybe you got, uh, but Maybe if, but if you understand in terms of number of standard deviations, then you can still kind of make an I get an idea of what's going on. So Maria's IQ is 3.13 standard deviations above the mean. That would, that would be how I would explain it. Notice I used the word above because my z-score was positive, and obviously Maria's IQ was above the mean. Okay. Now, you can use z-scores to figure out uh, outliers and unusual values. Um, if, you got, if you guys remember when we did our uh, mean average uh, and standard deviation video and normal data, we said that anything that's two standard deviations away from the mean or above uh, is considered um, uh, a high outlier, and anything that's two standard deviations below the mean or less would be considered a low outlier. So if you translate that into a z-score, that means your z-score would have to be greater than or equal to 2 for it to be unusually high. And then z-scores are less than or equal to negative 2 when they're unusually low. Now later we'll see that um, you, this 2 and negative 2, uh, we can get a little more accurate with those. Later on we'll get into critical values and things like that. But right now, just have in your head, okay, about 2 or more standard deviations away is unusual. Um, it's also considered significant, so we'll kind of get into that later too. Z-scores are sometimes used for significance measures. If you guys remember, the um, typical values in a normal data are between uh, our one standard deviation from the mean. So that, if you translate that into a z-score, typical values would have a z-score between negative 1 and positive 1. So let's go back to Maria. Maria's z-score was 3.13, which is definitely higher than 2, right? So that means she was unusually high. Maria has an unusually high IQ, okay, because her z-score was above 2. 
Does that make sense? Like you might not understand. Like when I looked at 147, I didn't know, is that a lot or is that not a lot? Now I know it's a lot, right? Because the z-score tells me. Let's look at another one. So Rick's IQ was 87. What would be Rick's uh, z-score? Well, again, you start with Rick's value, right? Rick's value was 87. You minus the mean, and then you divide by the standard deviation. So 87 minus 100 is negative 13. Dividing by 15, we get negative 0 0.8666666. Again, I rounded it to the hundredths place, so I got negative 0 0.87. Now, be careful. This is not a proportion. This is not a percentage. Do not convert that to 87%. A z-score is number of standard deviations. It's not actually a percentage or a proportion. You want to be very careful with that. You leave it as negative 0.87. That means that Rick's IQ is 0.87 standard deviations below the mean. Below the mean. Notice again, negative means below. Notice I didn't say negative 0.87 standard deviations below. The negative tells me it's below. The 0.87 tells me how many standard deviations. So better to say it that it's 0.87 standard deviations below the mean. Now where does Rick fall compared to other people? Well, didn't we say any z-score between negative 1 and positive 1 would be considered typical? And this IQ, negative 0.87, is between negative 1 and positive 1 on the number line. So Rick is actually very typical. He has a typical IQ. Like a lot of people, I think we mentioned in the normal data uh, section that, that that's about the middle 68%. So Rick's kind of in the middle 68% of people, um, people's IQ. Okay? Now remember, not, we talked about this, not everybody is unusual or typical. There's people that are sort of in that middle ground. Um, so like suppose I had a z-score of 1.5. Well, 1.5 is not typical, it's, it's not in the typical zone, but it's also not unusual, right, because not two or above. So a 1.5 z-score is not typical and it's not unusual, right? So don't think that everybody has to fall into typical or unusual, okay? All right, so I hope this helped you. This is z-scores. We'll be talking more about z-scores throughout the class, but this is just an introduction to calculating them and an introduction to sort of starting to explain them. Like I say, we'll get more and more into z-scores throughout the class, all right?